Good evening and welcome to Ville News. I'm your host, Ruby Mundock, along with Becca Patches, here to give you the latest campus, local, and national headlines. Stay tuned because Ville News starts now. The College of Science and Technology has a new dean as Dr. Mark Harris was named to the position here at Millersville University. Harris is currently serving at Lebanon Valley College as the dean of faculty. Provost and vice president of academic affairs, Dr. Gail Gasparich, was quoted as saying, Dr. Harris will be joining a college with a long history of providing students with the depth and breadth of education needed for success in the fields of science and technology. His research pairs well with our active scholars in the college, 98% of whom hold their doctoral degrees, end quote. Harris is currently researching focusing on student learning and development. He graduated from the University of Arizona with a degree in chemistry and earned his doctorate in, or in inorganic chemistry from the University of Nevada. Harris takes over his role effective July 1st. During Women's History Month, Millersville University celebrated with Her Carnival, an event hosted by Her Campus, created in order to empower and provide education on all the obstacles women face. We'll now go to Valentina Zamora with an inside look at the celebration. In celebrating Women's History Month, Her Campus is putting on an event to celebrate women all around called Her Carnival. We asked multiple girls at the event what empowered them as being a woman to be able to instill confidence in other women and make them feel better about themselves and see the, the spark that already shines within them just shine brighter when they open up and let themselves be who they are. I feel like there's so much out there in the world that shows what like the perfect woman has to be. Lately, I've grown so much confidence that I've learned that I don't have to be that perfect woman that is out there in society and that I have a whole bunch of people behind me that like empower me and make me feel confident in who I am. Just being a strong woman, being confident in who you are and just knowing all around who you are and showing that off to the world, I guess. Um, by that, I think that's what empowers women and shows women that they can be powerful. Just having all the girls here, woman empowerment, girl power. You've got this, giving them encouragement and excitement and joy and energy. I feel empowered when I'm surrounded by all the supportive women in my life who um, support all my decisions and allow me to grow to be the person that I am today. I think that women, especially today, have to be strong for themselves and for others. So strength empowers me to keep going and to empower other women. You get to motivate yourself and be powerful and it really helps you move on and keep on going. I can do anything else that a man can and I can achieve anything I set my mind to. We are so used to being um, taken down, especially by women, so I think it's important that we are resilient for ourselves in order to empower other women. The word that empowers me is passion because I have a lot of passions and I always put my whole heart and effort into each of them to empower myself and the other women around me. As you can see, there is so much love and support when it comes to sisterhood and that was here at this event. When we get back, Ville News will be giving you the latest news and weather updates. Ryan, what can we expect for the weather? Yeah, it was fairly warm out there. Even last week, we had temperatures going into the 70s. So it was pretty mild for this time of year. But right now, we're looking at some more clouds. And you can see just over Lancaster City right now, overcast conditions. We will start to see those conditions persist into the next couple of days here, as well as some more rain showers. And not only that, we are looking at some more winter-like conditions coming up for this weekend and how those winter-like conditions will affect us here in the lower Susquehanna Valley. I have the full forecast coming up here in just a bit. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Ville News. Ruby, how's the weather been? Honestly, I've been kind of disappointed because it was so beautiful last week, especially coming back from spring break, and now it just feels like winter all over yes, again. I wore shorts on Monday and Tuesday, and today, I wore sweatpants and a sweatshirt. Exactly. It's very upsetting. It is, yeah. and now we'll go to Ryan with the local weather. 
Yeah, Ruby, we were looking at a pretty mild week just last week, and you, you can see over on the three-day forecast right here, Wednesday, cloudy skies, 50 degrees for Wednesday's highs today, 46 for tonight's lows, and then Thursday, we're looking at cloudy conditions, 64 degrees for Thursday's highs, as well as 46 degrees for Thursday night's lows. Friday, 58 degrees with some clouds and sun, lows going into the lower 40s, and checking out our seven-day outlook here. This weekend, like I said, winter-like conditions. We are looking at some pretty breezy conditions as well as dropping temperatures for Sunday especially. But then looking at Monday and Tuesday, we have a good start to the work week with highs into the 40s. And back to you at the desk. An Eagleville woman has been charged with the death of two Pennsylvania state troopers and a pedestrian on Highway I-95. The pedestrian has been identified as 28-year-old Reyes Rivera Oliveras of Allentown, who was observed walking the southbound lanes of travel on I-95. Several passing motorists called 911 after being concerned about his behavior, which led to state troopers Martin Mack III and Brandon Siska arriving on the scene. The Troop K officers were in the process of securing him in the patrol vehicle when they were struck by 21-year-old Jayana Webb. The Pennsylvania State Police have filed felony and misdemeanor charges against Webb following their investigation. Webb has been charged with third-degree murder, homicide by vehicle while driving under the influence, involuntary manslaughter, and several other charges. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf has announced Pennsylvania's fourth annual 143 Day will take place on Monday, May 23rd, the 143rd day of 2022. The date is meant to encourage Pennsylvanians, show, Pennsylvanians to show neighbors kindness, generosity, and love in honor of the beloved Pittsburgh native Fred Rogers. Rogers, Rogers used 143 as an alternative way of saying I love you with the numbers representing the number of letters in each word. The governor stated, quote, I encourage all Pennsylvanians to join in this tradition and they don't have to wait for 143 Day to show compassion and generosity to others, particularly with recent world events, end quote. Pennsylvanians are, Pennsylvanians are encouraged to spend this fourth annual event to support human, humanitarian relief in Ukraine. Kirsten Allen will be leaving her current role as National Press Secretary for COVID-19 Response at the Department of Health and Human Services to serve in a new role as Vice President Kamala Harris's Press Secretary. Allen's new job will mark her return to Harris's staff as she previously served as the Deputy National Press Secretary and African American Media Director for Harris during her 2019 Democratic presidential campaign. This hire comes after months of vacancy for the press secretary job after Simone Sanders departed the office in December. Allen's addition to the team also comes after the exit of Harris's longest serving press staffer, Sabrina Singh. Sources state that the office hopes that Allen's expansive knowledge of Kamala Harris will help to fill the void left by Singh's departure, along with boosting Harris's presence on national television and print interviews. On the evening of Tuesday, March 22nd, two tornadoes ripped through areas of southern Louisiana near New Orleans. The Associated Press reports that the tornadoes touched down in Arabi, just east of New Orleans, and in Lacombe, which is e farther east across Lake Pontchartrain. Arabi has had already been hit hard last year by Hurricane Ida and devastated by Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Amy Sims, who has, who has relatives in Arabi, was quoted as saying, quote, I wasn't mentally prepared to see what I was seeing. A bomb looked like it had gone off, end quote. Louisiana has activated 300 National Guard members to clear roads and provide support to emergency personnel. The National Weather Service reported that the Arabi tornado was measured as an an EF3 with winds of 158 to 206 miles per hour, and the Lacombe tornado was an EF1 with winds as strong as 90 miles an hour. This storm has been marching east across the southern part of the country, causing tornadoes and damage in Texas on Monday and delivering eight inches of rain to the Alabama city of Silacauga. Overnight from Tuesday to Wednesday, two people have been killed and multiple people have been injured by these storms. Back in February, Texas Governor Abbott issued an order restricting access to gender affirming medical care. In response to Texas's ban, 15 other states are pushing to implement similar bills that would limit access or ban gender affirming medical care. According to this order, both parents and medical providers could be at risk for legal trouble. The bill limits the access to gender-affirming care for trans youth roughly between the ages of 13 to 17. Three of these proposed bills also affect young adults ages 18 to 20. 
Abbott's order classifies the provision of gender-affirming care as, quote, child abuse, end quote. Since the passing of this order and the subsequent following of the various states, UCLA School of Law has published a research brief expressing the dangerous implications of these new bills. According to UCLA, this new bill puts one-third of trans youth at risk. Author and researcher Keith J. Conran stated, quote, 58,000 transgender youth and young adults across 15 states are in jeopardy of losing access to gender-affirming care, end quote. These new bills are in direct opposition to the recommendations of the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychology, and the American Psychology Association. AACAP released a statement responding to the efforts to ban gender-affirming care. They stated, quote, AACAP supports the use of current evidence-based clinical care with minors and strongly opposes any efforts, legal, legislative, or otherwise. Despite tremendous amounts of pushback from psychological institutions and trans rights activists, these states are still pushing for these bills to be passed. When we come back, we'll turn to Ryan Argenti with more updates on local weather and get an update on the war in Ukraine. And welcome back to Ville News, everyone. I'm student meteorologist Ryan Argenti here with your latest Ville News weather forecast. And checking out Lancaster City right now, overcast conditions, and you probably have seen even walking to class today over Millersville, Pretty cloudy conditions as you're headed to class today, and right now conditions are sitting right into the upper 40s temperature-wise, 48 to 52 degrees for our range. We're going to start to see those cloudy conditions persist into the evening hours, as well as some more rain developing as we head into the latter parts of this evening. But speaking of this evening, tonight, 44 to 48 degrees, cloudy conditions. We are expecting some light rain to move through the lower Susquehanna Valley due to a storm system that's just to our southwest currently and that's making its way northeast. I'll get into that in the radar discussion here in just a little bit. But as we head into tomorrow though, tomorrow's conditions are going to be 62 to 66 degrees, mostly cloudy conditions, as well as a passing shower due to that storm system that's just in, that's in close enough proximity to us. And as we head into Thursday night, Thursday night, 44 to 48 degrees, pretty similar temperatures. Uh, from for tonight for Thursday night and as we head into Thursday night we are looking at some heavier downpours and even heavier evening showers but after those showers we're going to start to see those clouds decrease a little bit and start to break up as we head into Friday and you can see here Friday not too bad 56 to 60 degrees as well as some very vari variably variably cloudy conditions variably cloudy conditions as well as very seasonable temperatures 56 to 60 degrees not too bad for this time of year, but don't get too used to it. I'll get into that here as we talk about that in the model of guidance here coming up. You can see in the radar right now, scattered showers across the Commonwealth, especially in central and eastern parts of Pennsylvania right now. And like I was saying, we do have a storm system just to our southwest, which is actually producing some severe thunderstorms and even some tornado warnings. We were just talking about those tornadoes that happened in Texas and also New Orleans. So. But these storms are not going to be packing that much of a punch for the lower Susquehanna Valley. They'll just be moving northeast and be dissipating as we, as we head into the, the future here. But other than that, passing showers for the Commonwealth. As we head into the model guidance, you can see there's a low pressure just to our west. And right, right where that low pressure is, just ahead of that cold front, is where we see all this precipitation there. And that will start to quickly move off to our east. And we also have a warm front that's just south of us. If that warm front punches north of the Mason-Dixon line just a little bit, we'll have warmer temperatures, but if it fails to do so, we're gonna have below normal temperatures for the next couple days coming up here. But as we look at Friday, we're gonna see those clouds start to break up a little bit, like I was saying. We'll have a little bit of a break, but as we check out Saturday, looking at a little bit of a convective system, and you can see a little bit of blue there, GFS model says we could have some snow for this weekend. Winter-like conditions, like I was saying. And also, those temperatures are going to drop due to an Arctic mass that is dipping down into the northeast. And that's going to be giving us some stronger winds and also much colder conditions, colder than normal conditions for this time of year. But as we head into Monday and Tuesday, it's looking pretty nice for the beginning of the work week. But as we check out our three-day outlook, 50 degrees was our high today, 46 degrees for our low. It was, it's pretty cloudy today, and that will be going into tomorrow. 64 degrees for tomorrow's highs and then 46 degrees for Thursday night's lows and then Friday looking at some clouds and sun those clouds will start to break up with 58 degrees as our high 42 degrees for Friday night's lows and then checking out our seven-day outlook here 
Saturday and Sunday, like I said, fairly wintry conditions. Saturday is going to start to get cooler with that rain moving through due to that convective system. But then as we head into Sunday, very breezy conditions, 42 degrees for a high. And even with that breeze kicking in, that's going to feel much colder than 42. It'll probably feel more like 30 degrees with that wind chill factor. And as we head into Sunday night, 24 degrees will be our low. But Monday and Tuesday, not looking too bad. Some partly cloudy conditions and highs will be going into the 40s for the beginning of the work week. And so your weather broadcast has been brought to you by the Millersville University Campus Weather Service. Visit us at millersville.edu slash weather center for all of your latest weather updates. With tensions still on the rise between Russia and Ukraine, we'll now go to Michael McDonald and Ruby Mundock with an update on the situation. One month into the Ukrainian-Russian war, airstrikes and bomb shelters have become daily life in the capital city of Kyiv. Over 3.4 million citizens have fled the country searching for safety. The Ukrainian military has continued to stand strong against the dominant Russian force. To break down the complexities of this conflict, Ville News' own Ruby Mundak sat down with Dr. Kitterer to discuss Putin's motives for invading Ukraine. Unfortunately, it not will be the last victim because uh, he said that he would not stop until he will restore uh, all Russian influence on territory that Russia had before. Uh, and he demanded that NATO would return to the borders of 1997. In light of this, the West issued harsh economic sanctions on the Russian elite. However, this is affecting the average Russian citizen, causing them financial burden. He ruined his own country also. Uh, sanctions, uh, first of all, uh, affected um, poor people, uh, common people, not uh, Russian elite that uh, have uh, enormous wealth. While Russian citizens face economic hardships, the real fears are in the bombed out Ukrainian towns and cities. With Russians at their doorsteps, we have seen tremendous damage in Europe, the likes of which we haven't seen since World War II. They uh, completely destroy uh, Russian, uh, sorry, Ukrainian towns and cities and uh, all country in ruins. It already cost billions and billions of dollars, all this destruction. Already uh, many thousands of civilians died in this war. So, I mean, uh, it uh, would take probably a decade uh, or more to rebuild country after this war uh, so far, even if war would finish uh, soon. But, and the uh, situation is very, very sad. Uh, people uh, have to flee their homes, uh, large cities uh, and uh, small towns uh, under continuous air strikes and uh, bombs. Uh, uh, it's genocide. It's a genocide policy that provides now uh, Russia toward Ukraine. Within those destroyed buildings and crowded shelters, the Ukrainian resilience is stronger than ever. Uh, yes, I can tell you that uh, all citizens of Ukraine, whether they uh, Ukrainian, Russian, Jewish, Polish, uh, they all against Putin regime. As citizens fled to Poland, Moldova, Germany and other Western nations, the conversation is expanding to potential invasions of NATO countries that were once part of the former Soviet Union. Uh, Putin, like Hitler, will take countries one by one. Uh, and um, yes, unfortunately, uh, according to intelligence services of different countries, uh, that uh, Russia going attack uh, soon Baltic states. Uh, there are even information that the next country would be Lithuania. With negotiations failing between Russian and Ukrainian diplomats, the conflict has no end in sight. However, Dr. Kitterer has an optimistic outlook on the future of Ukraine. I uh, would like to provide an optimistic prognosis that fate uh, would be great and it will be again free democratic country. But if all countries occupied, they would not accept this regime. They will have guerrilla war, partisan war that would last it forever until they chase away uh, the last Russian from their territory. Because Ukraine now fight not only for own democracy, but uh, for democracy of all Western world. Dr. Kitterer had some final thoughts on how we as the Millersville community can support those in Ukraine. You can find links of organizations worth donating to in the description of this video. Reporting from Millersville University, Ruby Mundock and Michael McDonald, Channel 99, Ville News. 
That's all we have for this week for Ville News. Thanks for watching and tune in next week for the newest local, state and national headlines.